Good afternoon, class. Today we are discussing Chapter 4 of the Law of Obligations. Uh, our source material once again is uh, Obligations and Contracts by De Leon and De Leon Jr. Um, remember, class, Chapter 4 will be talking about um, extinguishment of obligations. So there are several modes of extinguishment of obligations, uh, which we will learn when we discuss a general provisions of Chapter 4. So in chapter four, remember it enumerated the uh, so general provisions. It enumerated the causes of extinguishment of obligations. So there are actually several. Uh, please take note of payor a contract. So remember, PA will refer to payment or performance. Um, LO will refer to loss of the thing due. What else? Uh, RE will refer to remission or condonation of the debt, sometimes also known as waiver. Um, ME will refer to confusion or merger of rights of creditor and debtor, uh, while CO will uh, refer to compensation, N refers to duration, uh, F refers to fulfillment of a residuary condition. Now, remember, we have already studied this one. Hanggang sa novation, remember, this will be discussed um, as we go along chapter 4, but yung uh, letter G, yung fulfillment of a residuary condition, we already discussed when we discussed section 1 of uh, chapter 3. Remember, ang resolutory condition, ang obligation subject to a resolutory condition is immediately due and demandable. So, the obligation is already pre-existing. Nandiyan eh, yung obligation. Now, upon the, uh, upon the happening of the resolutory condition, uh, the, the pre-existing obligation is uh, terminated. So, Remember, this is a cost of extinguishment. Kasi nga, pagka nangyari na yung condition, the obligation is extinguished. Uh, upon the agreement of the parties, the obligation is immediately demandable, meaning that exists na siya kaagad. Uh, so, meron na tayong pre-existing obligation, meron tayong existing obligation. But upon the happening of the condition, the obligation is uh, terminated. So, yun ang effect ng uh, resolutory condition, to terminate an existing obligation. What else? Um rescission and also annulment. So remember, rescission applies to rescissible contracts, which we will discuss when we go to Chapter 6 of uh, the Law on Contracts. And also, A is um, yung, uh, uh, refers to voidable contracts. Uh, we will discuss voidable contracts when we go to Chapter 7 of the Law on Contracts. But anyway, uh, rescission and annulment uh, have the same lang ang concept niya. Halos in a way na it cancels an obligation by a decree of uh, court. So, go to court, the court will uh, cancel the obligation. Um, but, uh, remember, ang pagkakaiba niyan is the grounds. So, yung grounds for rescission and the grounds for annulment are uh, very different. So, for now, please remember that it is a cancellation of the obligation ordered by the court. Now, prescription, we already studied. Remember yung prescription, uh, this will refer to extinctive uh, prescription or yung prescription wherein the rights of the uh, creditor are to demand payment are lost due to the lapse of time. Ang tagal hindi nagdemanda, hindi nagdemand ng payment. So remember, nagpe-prescribe na yung right to uh, collect. Kaya siya uh, cause of extinguishment because the debtor, the creditor loses the right to demand payment. So the obligation is extinguished by extinctive uh, prescription. Um, anyway, uh, you can also add to that the other causes of extinguishment of obligations. Uh, remember, death of a party in case the obligation is personal because it is a personal obligation service ito. So, it can no longer be performed by somebody else. So, uh, it extinguishes the obligation. What else? Um, arrival of a resolutory period when we discuss chapter um, section 2 of chapter 3. So remember, ang resolutory period, um, an obligation subject to a resolutory period is immediately demandable. But once the resolutory period arrives, the obligation is terminated. So once again, uh, ito ay cause of extinguishment because the obligation is already existing upon agreement. So they agreed today, the obligation is uh, starts today but remember the obligation is extinguished or the obligation is terminated upon the arrival of a resolutory period so what else there is mutual desistance or withdrawal 
the parties agree to um, uh, mutually uh, withdraw from the contract. That is a compromise, meaning um, the parties uh, agree to settle na lang yung kanilang uh, contract. Uh, this is usually pagka may uh, yung mga uh, contentious yung uh, mga claims. So, kung meron silang demanda sa isa't isa, um, then they, they thereafter they agree na lang to settle amicably yung um, obligation. Of course, if there is amicable settlement or compromise, the obligation is uh, extinguished. What else? Happening of a fortuitous event, this is the general rule. Absent any um, uh, absent any ground for liability such as uh, mora, uh, violatio, culpa, and uh, dolo. Uh, remember, the happening of a fortuitous event, a uh, bad faith pala, kasama rin yan. The happening of a fortuitous event will extinguish the uh, obligation. So, uh, except when, again, yun nga, meron tayo uh, uh, yung mga laws for liability. Also, if there's a stipulation, uh, despite a uh, fortuitous event, the, the debtor is liable. And also, when the nature of the obligation uh, requires the assumption of uh, risk. So, yung mga obligations also arising from um, crimes, they are not, um, they are accepted from uh, this also. So, anyway, uh, please uh, remember yung mga modes of uh, extinguishment of obligation. I think there's one more, yung impossibility pala of fulfillment. So, impossibility of fulfillment, uh, hindi difficulty, uh, it is impossible to uh, fulfill. So, Usually, this will refer to your uh, personal obligations na hindi na talaga magawa. So, dahil nga, impossible to do already. So, anyway, uh, those are the causes of extinguishment of uh, obligations. Um, let us proceed with section 1, payment or performance. So, remember, payment will refer this. Uh, payment talaga technically refers to yung um, delivery of money or giving of a thing. Now, yung performance usually refers to personal obligations. Technically, it will uh, uh, refer to the doing or not doing of an act. But nowadays, they are uh, used interchangeably. So, payment may mean performance also. And performance may mean uh, payment as well. So, uh, so, not only delivery of money, but also giving of a thing or performance of a service. Or non-performance in case it is a negative personal obligation. So, again, to properly exist, creditor must accept the payment expressly or impliedly. Now, please take note of uh, the considerations in payment or performance. Um, ito yung kailangan natin isipin when we pay yung uh, obligation. Before the obligation is extinguished, we have to take note of these two. So, yung una is integrity of prestation. Uh, remember, uh, Pagka integrity, the thing or service has been completely delivered or rendered. So, kung yung pin mismong pinag-usapan ang dineliver mo or yung mismong service na pinag-usapan ang ginawa mo and you pay, you pay it or you perform it completely, yun ang integrity of prestation. So, uh, remember, there are... Uh, exceptions to integrity, there is substantial performance in good faith, meaning hindi full payment, but uh, the obligation is likewise extinguished. We will discuss that later on. 1235 naman, acceptance of, of incomplete or irregular performance. So here, the payment is not complete or irregular, so wala na naman integrity kasi hindi full ang render na payment or na service. But remember, the obligation is extinguished. Uh, because it falls under the exceptions, we will discuss that later on. 1248 also when partial performance is allowed. So as to the portion that is um, already uh, paid, uh, the obligation will may be partially extinguished. What else? Uh, 1244 naman. So kung yung una, integrity, payment must be made in full. Performance must be made in full. Yun yung integrity. So kung hindi full ang payment mo, hindi full ang performance mo, hindi complete, walang integrity ang payment mo. So, kung hindi, uh, kung walang integrity ang payment mo or the payment is not full or the performance is not complete, remember the creditor can refuse to accept yung payment mo. So, kung halimbawa, um, 
ang amount ng utang mo is 10,000. Ang binabayaran ko lang is partial. Remember, the creditor can refuse to accept that. Uh, especially when there is no uh, stipulation uh, na dapat tanggapin ng creditor ang partial uh, payment. So, kung ayaw ng creditor na tanggapin yung incomplete uh, performance mo, pwede, the creditor is allowed. Why? Because there is no integrity of uh, prestation. Now, yung identity of prestation naman, ang sabi niyan, very thin service or prestation due must be delivered or performed. Kung ano mismo yung pinag-usapan nating bagay or service, yun ang iperperform, hindi pwedeng palitan. Kung ang sinabing performance ang service ay kumanta ka ng maybe this time, hindi pwedeng kantahin mo ay text man by Coco Martin. Ang kailangan mong kantahin ay maybe this time by Coco Martin. Yun ang tandaan ninyo. Ito na naman tayo, favorite singer ko na naman to si Coco Martin. Anyway, um, real obligations. Um, so, in obligations to deliver, remember, a thing different from that due cannot be offered or demanded against the will of the creditor or debtor. So, the debtor cannot offer a different object. So, kung ang pinag-usapan natin is Toyota Vios Red uh, with plate number ABC123, what you have to deliver is Toyota Vios Red plate number ABC123. So, the debtor cannot offer a different car even if it is uh, more expensive. And remember class, also on the other hand, the creditor cannot demand a different object even if it is cheaper. So what if the creditor, ang gusto na lang niya is yung uh, pogpog or yung hand tractor, huliglig, ay, ay hindi ko na alam kung anong tawag nyo dyan, ano? but uh, usually ito yung orange one na ginagamit sa pag, pagsasaka. So uh, even if the creditor does not want the Toyota Vios anymore, the creditor cannot demand that you deliver a cheaper uh, alternative. Remember, kahit na, eh, ayoko na yung Toyota Vios kasi hindi naman ako talaga marunong mag-drive. Ang gusto ko na lang, pog, pog, pwede pa yun. Hindi pwede yun class as a general rule. Also, yung debtor, on the other hand, a debtor cannot refuse to, uh, cannot offer yung um, a different object even if it is more expensive. Toyota Vios lang ang pinapadeliver sa debtor pero ang gusto nang i-deliver ng debtor, Jaguar, yan ang gusto kong i-deliver. So, uh, BMW, oh, yan. Pero, hindi pwedeng ipilit ng debtor yan. So, yun ang tandaan nyo. But, um, ito pa, positive personal, act to be performed or act prohibited cannot be substituted against the uh, creditor's will. So, yun ang, anyway, I've already discussed that. So, um, exceptions to identity of prestation. Article 1206, uh, in case of facultative obligations, uh, we will discuss later on. Uh, we already discussed before. 1245, in case there is another agreement, resulting in the shun in payment or uh, duration. We will discuss that uh, later on. Also, in case of waiver by the creditor. So, creditor, if uh, the debtor offers a different thing and the creditor accepts a different thing, there is a waiver on the part of the creditor. So, ang debtor gusto niyang uh, ibigay to yung tabios, pula plate number ganito, pero yung debtor in-offer niya is color blue kasi yun na naman meron siya. Um, uh, Toyota Vios. If the creditor accepts, that is a waiver dun sa identity of prestation. So, anyway, the obligation is extinguished just the same. So, in 1206, 1245, and number 3, in case of waiver, kung ano yung pinag-usapan na object, iba yung binigay nila. So, walang identity. Pero dahil ito ay mga exceptions to identity of prestation, remember that the obligation is extinguished. Ito yung pinag-usapan, pero iba yung binigay. Pero dahil ito ay nalalaglag sa exceptions, remember, obligation is uh, extinguished. So anyway, please take note of burden of proof. Uh, creditor has the burden of showing that a valid debt exists. So ang creditor ang magpapatunay na may utang ang debtor. Yan ang obligation niya to prove that the debtor is in fact indebted to him. Now, uh, once the creditor proves that there is an, an existing debt na uh, obligation ng isang debtor, that particular debtor has the burden of proving that he has paid yung uh, debt in case payment has been uh, made. So, kung nagbayad na talaga yung debtor, the debtor has an obligation to prove uh, payment. So, anyway, yun ang tandaan natin sa um, burden of proof. Uh, please take note also of um, substantial performance or compliance in good faith. We will be discussing now yung exceptions to integrity of uh, prestation. Uh, 12, 
34, 35, and 12, 48. In other books, they call it integrity of payment, but that is the same animal. So anyway, um, substantial performance or compliance is in good faith according to fair intent of the contract, and there is good faith, uh, attempt in good faith to perform. So remember, good faith is always presumed. He who, he, he who alleges bad faith has the burden of proving that there is in fact uh, bad faith. So, kung sino ang nagsabing oh, bad faith ka, patunayan mo na bad faith ako. So, yun ang tandaan natin. So, anyway, um, in case of substantial performance, recovery is allowed um, because the creditor benefited. So, uh, the debtor should be allowed to recover as if there has been strict and complete fulfillment but uh, less damages suffered by the creditor. So, yung um, damages suffered by the creditor is justly compensated. So, dahil meron ng relative breach, hindi siya buong breach kasi nga meron na perform talaga substantial uh, committed by the uh, obligor. Meron na perform but there is a relative uh, partial breach committed by the debtor. So, uh, remember, uh, the requisites for application of this, there is substantial performance uh, and remember that the uh, debtor must be in good faith. So, um, example in your book, um, ay, medyo nakalimutan ko na. So, anyway, um, bibigyan ko na lang kayo ng example. Uh, nung time ng pandemic, ang nagkaubusan is uh, instant noodles. Uh, do you believe that? Uh, ubus ang instant noodles sa lahat ng supermarket. So, um, let us say a uh, debtor is supposed to deliver uh, 10 boxes of um, Lucky Me, um, Pancit Canton to uh, Chili Mancit flavor to me and the creditor to say, yun ang gusto kong flavor, bakit ba? So anyway, um, debtor is supposed to deliver that, pero nagkakausan. So, na-deliver na niya yung uh, box 1, box 2, box 3. Uh, let us say here that uh, uh, nag-allow din ako ng um, yung delivery niya is uh, partial. So, okay naman yun. Pwedeng tanggapin yun. Again, that is an exception to uh, integrity. So, anyway, um, bigla na-deliver na niya is 9 boxes of uh, Lucky Me, Pancit Canton, uh, Chili Mancit flavor. Pero talagang wala na talaga siyang makita na kahit na anong pancit canton, kahit na anong flavor, kahit na anong instant noodle, wala na siya. Noodles, wala talaga siyang makita. So, even if uh, the case is 90 yung na-deliver na niya, tapos uh, minsan na lang yung deliver, same. Pero wala pa rin siyang mahanap na, um, uh, 9 pala ang na-deliver niya, pero wala pa rin siyang mahanap na uh, isa na lang na box ng uh, uh, pancit canton. But remember here, plus there is uh, actually a relative uh, breach kasi hindi niya na-deliver lahat. So, walang integrity dito kasi payment is not made in full. But because the creditor benefited, the uh, debtor should be allowed to recover as if there is strict and complete fulfillment. Uh, pero remember, uh, less damage is suffered by the um, obligee or the creditor. So, kung let us say 1,000 uh, per box ng uh, pancit canton, hindi ko talaga alam, I'm just guessing. So, anyway, uh, there is a relative breach. So, ang babayaran lang niya is 9 boxes. So, uh, 9,000 pesos, uh, 10,000 dapat, but less yung uh, damages suffered by the creditor. So, minus 1 box, um, 9,000 uh, pesos. So, that is uh, just compensation for the breach committed by the uh, debtor. Um, but here, remember, just the, sub, there must be substantial compliance. Talagang, um, kailangan um, mapatunayan din ng um, ng there, there, there must be an attempt uh, in good faith talaga to comply. Sinubukan talaga niya, pero talagang kinapos lang. Sinubukan ng debtor to perform the entire obligation, pero kinapos lang talaga. So, anyway, um, please take note also of 1235. There is also recovery allowed when there is incomplete or irregular performance. And that uh, incomplete or irregular performance is a uh, waived. So, actually here, the reason for um, allowing extinguishment even if there is no integrity, kahit hindi buo ang payment, is waiver on the part of the creditor. So, um, waiver or estoppel. So, obviously, uh, it goes without say na kung ang payment is not full or there is no integrity of payment, creditor can refuse to accept yung payment. Uh, I think nasabi ko na yan kanina. Now, uh, in case the creditor, even if uh, aware siya na kulang yung bayad, tinanggap niya, there is uh, yung uh, presumption ng uh, law. 
uh, na nagkaroon ng waiver dun sa right ng creditor to collect on the balance. So, the whole obligation is extinguished but the waiver must be proven by the debtor. So, um, let us say, class, ang utang sa iyo ng debtor is 5 piso, pero ang binayad niya sa iyo is 4 pesos and 75 uh, centavos lamang. So, ay, kulang ako ng 25, sabi ng uh, debtor. Ikaw naman, tinanggap mo yon Tapos, sige, okay na, sabi mo sa uh, debtor. Uh, so, yun ay waiver, yung uh, right to collect yung uh, balance na 25 uh, centavos. But this waiver must be proven by uh, the debtor. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Uh, what else? Um, uh, requisites for application. Creditor knows that the performance is incomplete or irregular and the creditor accepts performance without expressing any protest or objection. Now, a question that you might have is, Ma'am slash Sir, pwede bang tanggapin yung um, partial payment? Pero, papano kung gusto naming habulin pa yung uh, balance? na hindi ibinigay sa amin or hindi namin nasingil. Pwede bang tanggapin yon without um, waiving yung aming right to collect on the balance? Yes, remember, if the acceptance is qualified acceptance of incomplete or irregular payment or acceptance under protest. So, remember, in case of qualified acceptance or of incomplete or irregular payment, um, uh, remember, this is a protest or objection made by the creditor and this will show that there is no waiver on his part to enforce his right to further recover or collect from the debtor. So here, uh, itong uh, creditor, tatanggapin niya yung 4 pesos and 75 centavos but will not waive the right to collect on yung 25 centavos na balance. So remember here, class, sige, tanggapin ko na itong 4 4 pesos and 75 centavos pero bayaran mo pa rin yung kulang. So, yun ang tinatawag nating acceptance under protest, qualified acceptance, etc. etc. So, pwede naman. Uh, so, here, remember, um, obligation is not extinguished until um, na-collect yung balance. Uh, third exception to integrity of prestation is when partial performance is allowed. Uh, so, partial performance may be allowed if it is stipulated. So, obviously, um, pagka napag-agrihan ng debtor and creditor that uh, partial performance is allowed, um, palamang-lamang the creditor has to accept yung uh, partial payments. Um, partially liquidated debt. So, when the debt is in part liquidated and in part unliquidated, obviously, yung part which is liquidated may be insisted upon either by the debtor or the creditor. So, the creditor can demand payment doon sa part na liquidated. Yung unliquidated, hindi pa niya madedemand kasi hindi pa alam kung magkano. What else? Um, number three, when the different prestations are subject to different conditions or a different term. So, um, pagka... Uh, Pagka um, merong different conditions or different terms, remember class na yung mga prestations cannot be executed simultaneously but uh, this will be executed successively. So, kailangan mo nang mangyari yung condition or mag-arrive yung uh, term uh, which is pertinent to a particular um, uh, portion of the prestation. Kaya, Dito, allowed ang partial performance kasi itong portion na to hindi pa nangyayaring condition para di sa portion na to Yung portion na to hindi pa nangyayari yung, um, hindi pa nag arrive yung term para sa portion na ito. So, remember here, um, different prestations, uh, they are subject to different terms or conditions. So, obviously, kailangan mangyari muna yung uh, condition uh, and also kailangan mag-arrive muna yung term so that um, there will be fulfillment. Um, what else? Um, these are the exceptions now to in identity of prestation. In other books, they call it, again, identity of payment. So anyway, um, facultative obligation, which we already discussed in 1206, only one prestation is agreed upon, but the debtor may render another in substitution. So remember, choice of the de debtor, whether or not he will substitute the object. So, Pagka pinili niyang i-deliver yung substitute, 
wala nang identity kasi yun ay um, hindi na yung object na pinag-usapan. Pero dahil may pinag-usapan sila na pwedeng i-substitute yan, uh, this is allowed uh, as one of the exceptions. Uh, also, please take note of uh, dasyon in payment, dasyon in pago, adjudication in pago, or dasyon in solidum. So remember, uh, this is covered by 1245, conveyance of ownership of a thing as an accepted equivalent of performance. Remember here, that the debt, uh, that the debt is a uh, money debt. So, ang utang talaga is pera. But uh, the obligation is satisfied not by the payment of money. Because common sense, if your utang is pera, dapat ang bayad mo rin is pera din. But remember here, uh, in case of the shot in payment, what is accepted as performance is the alienation of property. So, walang identity rito kasi... Um, Pera, dapat bayaran ng pera. Pero dito, ang pinagbayad ay property. So, dahil ang inuusap, pinag-usapan natin dito is bayaran, the law on sales governs the shot in payment. So, bayaran ng property. So, think of it as an advance payment doon sa property that will be alienated to you later on. So, amount of money debt, yung halaga ng uh, inutang, becomes the price of the property or thing that is uh, alienated. So, remember here also, true intention of the parties subject to the obligation to uh, to subject yung obligation to the shot in payment expressed or implied must be uh, clear. So, dapat maliwanag na ang intention ng parties here is to um, enter into uh, the shot in payment para mag, uh, as a, a way to uh, perform yung obligation. No identity because uh, money debt is paid with uh, another object or a property. So, yun ang tandaan natin um, in case of the shot in payment or the shot in pago. Yung third exception is, of course, yung uh, waiver on the part of the uh, uh, creditor. So, creditor will uh, want to allow pala or will accept another thing which is different doon sa bagay na pinag-usapan. So, the rules regarding payers, in other book, they call them payers. But, uh, in short, ito yung uh, rules concerning yung mga nagbabayad. So, um, persons from whom the creditor must accept payment, uh, number one, the debtor. Siyempre, ang debtor ang primarily liable sa isang obligation. So, the creditor must accept payment from him. Number two, any person who has an interest in the obligation, like a guarantor or a surety. And the last one, actually, a third person, any person uh, who has no interest in the obligation when there is a stipulation that he can make a payment. So if it is agreed that third persons can make payment, uh, pwede rin yun. So what else do you have to remember? Uh, yung itong rules sa 1236, creditor may refuse payment by a third person. So creditor may choose not to accept yung uh, payment ng isang uh, third person na wala naman kasi siyang interest doon sa fulfillment ng obligation. The creditor may insist na yung debtor ang magbayad. And uh, remember, creditor, hindi mo siyang hindi mo siya pwedeng pilitin na tanggapin ang bayad ng isang third person for uh, whatever uh, reason. Now, uh, remember, there are exceptions to this. Uh, the exceptions consist in instances when the creditor has an obligation to accept payment by a third person. So, uh, here, there is a stipulation allowing this, and um, third person has an interest in the fulfillment of an obligation, like a guarantor or a surety or joint debtor. Yan. So, uh, here, third person uh, may pay, kasi nga, uh, number one, stipulated, and number two, meron siyang interest in the obligation. But as a general rule class, remember, a uh, creditor can refuse payment of a third person, especially if the third person has no interest in the fulfillment of the obligation. Now, effect of payment by a third person, um, we will discuss this with 1237 uh, para hindi na tayo masyadong uh, magtagal. So, uh, Payment by a third person may be made uh, without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor. So, pwedeng magbayad ang third person 
Uh, by the way, class, if the creditor accepts voluntarily or willingly accepts yung uh, payment of a third person, the obligation in so far as the creditor is concerned is uh, extinguished. So let us say, creditor, si debtor may utang kay creditor, third person, T pays, T, the third person. So if T pays and the creditor accepts yung payment of third person, in so far as the creditor is concerned, wala nang utang si debtor sa kanya because tinanggap na niya yung bayad ni third person. Now, um, yung pagbabayad ni third person, obviously, this is with the knowledge of the creditor. I do not need to say that because it is the creditor who will decide to accept or not yung payment ng third person. But the debtor may or may not know about yung payment. Now, um, if made without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, meaning the debtor knows that payment is being made by a third person, but the debtor objects, ay, babayaran na ni third person yung utang mo. Tapos sabi ni debtor, ay, wag, wag, ayokong bayaran niya yung utang ko. Ganyan. So, that is a payment made against the will of the debtor. Kasi, kahit naman umayaw si debtor, ay, wag niyang bayaran yung utang ko. Pero kung tinanggap naman na ni creditor, ano pang magagawa ni debtor? So, yun ang tantabi dyan. If it is made without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, the payer or the third person, yan na, the payer here is the third person, uh, payer can recover from the debtor in so far as payment has been beneficial to the uh, debtor, ay to the, eh, tama, to the debtor. The recovery is only up to the extent or amount of the debt at the time of uh, payment. So here, again, same example. Creditor, pinautan niya si debtor, so, debtor should pay creditor. But here, it is a third person who pays the creditor. Tinanggap ni, um, tinanggap ni uh, creditor. When the creditor accepted payment, remember, the payment by, made by the third person is not known to the debtor or it is made against the will of the debtor. Siyempre, out na si creditor eh. Kasi nga, as far as he is concerned, the debtor has no debt anymore kasi binayaran na ni third person. Now, magkakaroon ng relationship between debtor and third person. Third person payer can recover from the debtor. So, ano yung extent? Only up to the amount that the debtor actually benefited from the payment of the third person. So, yun ang tandaan natin. The payer, uh, payer, is not entitled to subrogation but only allowed beneficial reimbursement. So for now, tandaan nyo muna yung term na uh, subrogation. So, but here, if the payment is made without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, beneficial reimbursement only. So anyway, example na lamang. Um, creditor, debtor. Debtor may utang kay creditor na um, 10,000 pesos. Itong si uh, debtor, nagbigay siya ng partial payment which the uh, creditor accepted. Let us say, 1,000 pesos. So, meron na lamang balance ang debtor na magkano? 9,000 pesos. So, anyway, um, third person comes and uh, pays the debt of the debtor. So, the third person is not aware na ang binay na meron na palang partial payment. Si creditor naman, hindi na rin niya sinabi. So, third person pays 10,000 pesos. So, nung binayaran ito ni third person at tinanggap ni creditor yung bayad, hindi alam ni debtor. Yun ang nangyari dyan. So, now, remember, out na si creditor. Katulad ng sinabi ko, because as to him, the obligation of the debtor has already been extinguished. And now, a relationship is created between third person and debtor. Now, third person, payer or payor, whatever, kung, kung ang gusto nyo itawag, uh, is allowed to recover yung binayaran niya. So, uh, itong si third person, pwede niyang singilin si debtor dun sa kanyang um, binayad or inabono. Now, the question here is, ma'am slash sir, magkano na ngayon ang ibabayad ni debtor kay third person? O, babalik yung question. Magkano bang benefit ni debtor dun sa binayad ni third person. Remember class, nabayaran na niya yung utang niya up to 1,000 pesos. 
So, dun sa binayad ni uh, third person kay creditor, ang napakinabangan lang talaga ni debtor dyan is 1,000. Uh, ang napakinabangan lang talaga ni debtor dyan is 9,000 pesos. So, if um, if itong si um, third person will demand payment from uh, debtor, debtor has to pay only 9,000 pesos. Why? Yun lang ang extent na nag-benefit siya. Kanya nga, beneficial reimbursement. Kung wala ang benefit doon, hindi mo na kailangan binayaran. Bayaran. Bakit hindi bakit nag-benefit ba siya doon sa extra na 1,000 na binayad ni uh, third person? Hindi siya nag-benefit doon kasi nakabayad na siya ng 1,000 actually. So remember, beneficial reimbursement. So yun ang tandaan natin for um 1236. Now um 1237 naman here. Um dito papasok yung um ah uh, uh, yung concept ng subrogation. So, tandaan nyo, ito ah. Pagka ang pinapalitan natin is a creditor, ang tawag dyan is subrogation. If we change the person of the debtor, we call it substitution. So, please be careful of the terms that you use. If we change the person of the debtor, substitution. If you change the person of the creditor, subrogation. Now, here, payment is made with knowledge and consent of the debtor. Ay, meron pala akong tanong kanina. Diba, um, for number, letter A, uh, diba, 9,000 lang ang na-recover ni third person. Tandaan nyo yun. So, paano yun? Ang binayad talaga ni third person is 10,000. Hindi dapat sana ang makukuha niya is 10,000. Kanino niya ngayon kukunin yung nabayad niya na sobra or na nabayad niya na 1,000 na extra? Remember, class, that the third person can recover it from the creditor based on the doctrine of solution in debiti. Bakit? The creditor is uh, not, uh, has no right to receive 10,000 pesos. Kasi nga may partial payment na, di ba? But the creditor is allowed only to receive 9,000 pesos. So, as far as yung 1,000 is concerned, there is a mistake in payment here. Creditor has no right to receive it. And it is delivered by mistake. Hindi niya sinabi eh na meron na palang partial payment. So, third person can recover 1,000 from a creditor based on the doctrine of solution in debiti, which I already discussed. I hope you remember. Now, back to this. Um, made with the knowledge and consent of the debtor. Meaning, itong third person na to, nung nagbayad siya, alam ng debtor, umayag ang debtor. So, Again, if the creditor accepts this payment, out na si creditor. Kasi as far as the creditor is concerned, wala nang utang sa kanya yung uh, debtor. Now, because there is consent on the part of the debtor, uh, and obviously there is also consent of the part of, on the part of the creditor, yung uh, third person is subrogated to the rights of the creditor. So remember, subrogation is the act of putting somebody into the shoes of the creditor. And here, class, remember that the third person or yung somebody who you will put into the shoes of the creditor will exercise all the rights and have all the actions that could be exercised by the creditor, including the right to proceed against guarantors, possessors uh, of mortgages, and etc., etc. So, lahat ng rights ng creditor mapapasa doon sa third person. Hindi katulad sa 1236, uh, hindi magiging creditor yung third person. Yun ang tandaan yung pagkakaiba. So, yung rights ng creditor, hindi mapupunta sa third person. Third per person lang siya na pwedeng makingi ng reimbursement. That's it. But here in 1237, remember, the third person will become your uh, creditor. So, right of reimbursement and subrogation to such right as guarantee, penalty clause, or mortgage. The payer shall have a right to recover what he has paid, which is not necessarily the amount of the debt, and acquire all the rights of the uh, creditor. So, yun ang uh, subrogation uh, as defined in uh, 1237. Uh, so, anyway, same problem. I will give you the same problem. Um, debtor is indebted to creditor, 10,000 pesos. Uh, sige, dagdagan ko ng konti. Secured by a mortgage 
on a parcel of land. So, to secure the obligation of debtor to creditor, sinanglarin niya yung kanyang lupa. Yan. Ano bang purpose ng sangla? Para pagka hindi nakabayad si uh, debtor kay creditor, creditor can proceed against yung mortgage property. So, pwede niyang ipa-foreclose yun. And, uh, pagka duman na sa proseso, the member class na bababayaran din siya doon sa kanyang um, mababayaran din ang creditor doon sa kanyang pinautang. So anyway, um, debtor, 10,000 borrowed from creditor and mortgaged a parcel of uh, land. So, itong si debtor, same uh, pa, uh, paid 1,000 pesos partial payment which the creditor accepted. So, anyway, uh, itong si third person offered to pay yung um, creditor and um, yung debtor agrees to the payment. Now, uh, let us say, class, the third person, uh, nagkaroon ng miscommunication, third person pays 10,000 pesos as well. So, walang nakapagsabi sa kanya na mayroon ng partial payment. Now, uh, question, if this creditor, uh, if this third person will get from the debtor, because remember, pagkabayad ng Ito na naman ako. Pagkabayad ng third person kay creditor ng 10,000 pesos, out na si creditor. Again, uh, as far as he is concerned, the debt of the debtor is already extinguished. So, it will create a new relationship. Dahil nga nag-consent yung debtor, itong uh, third person will become your creditor. And itong uh, debtor, syempre debtor pa rin siya. No? So, anyway, uh, third person, who is now your creditor, demands payment from a uh, debtor. Uh, how much is the uh, third person slash new creditor allowed to demand. So remember here, class, that the new creditor slash third person is allowed to demand 10,000 pesos. Bakit? Kasi uh, that is what he actually paid. Di ba malinaw? Right to recover. Ito ba ito? Ito ba ito? Ito ba Right? Ano ba yan? Di ba ito? Isama. Ano ba yan? Right to recover what he has paid. Actually paid. So, not necessarily the amount of debt. The amount of the debt is 9,000 na lang. But what the uh, third person paid here, yun ang talagang binayaran niya, is 10,000 pesos. So, remember that it that is what he can recover from the uh, uh, debtor. So, kailangan bayaran ng buo ng debtor na 10,000 yan. So, ito, ikaw naman na si debtor. Paano yung binayad ko na 1,000? Debtor can recover it from the creditor. Again, based on the doctrine, old creditor, based on the doctrine of solutio indebiti. Now, what if, class, what if hindi makapagbayad si debtor kay uh, third person slash new creditor? Remember, class, that uh, the new creditor will have the rights of the old creditor. Remember, may sangla, may mortgage dun sa parcel of land belonging to the debtor. So, itong si new creditor slash third person can uh, proceed on the mortgage property. Pwede niyang i-foreclose yan later on. So, pumas, napasa yung rights. So, uh, in beneficial reimbursement, remember, walang rights ng subrogation yan, obvious naman eh. And, kung may isang laman, yung una kong problem, kung may isang laman siya, yan, hindi rin makukuha ng third person. Kasi ang right lang ng third person na yan, who pays without knowledge or without the consent of the debtor, is beneficial reimbursement. So, yun ang tandaan natin sa uh, 12.36 and uh, 12.37. Uh, so, a third person can recover payment made to the creditor if the debt has prescribed, obviously. Um, tumanggap pa ng payment yung uh, creditor, eh, hindi naman aware third person na nag-prescribe na pala yung debt. So, nung nag-prescribe kasi yung debt, na-extinguish na yung obligation, there's nothing more to pay. So, debtor, a third person can recover payment from the creditor, not the debtor, ha? And debt has complete, been completely remitted, so the creditor condones the debt of the debtor. Tapos bigla may third person na nagbabayad, tinanggap pa niya. Hindi pwede yun. So itong third person can recover from uh, creditor as far as the debtor is concerned. Na-release na siya because of uh, remission. Uh, when the debt has already been paid, same concept as remission, there's already an extinguished obligation. Nabayaran na ng buo ni debtor, eh. So, ina-extinguish na yan. So, kung nagbabayad ang third person, ah, wala nang pakialam si debtor dyan kasi nabayaran na niya yun eh. Na-release na siya from that uh, obligation. So, um, 
when legal compensation has already taken place. So this is a uh, compensation uh, provided by law. Uh, nagkaroon ng pagkukwits yung utang ng uh, debtor and creditor. Na original creditor and yung debtor. So may utang si debtor kay original creditor and credit, original creditor may utang kay debtor. Hindi sa magbayaran sila, quits na lamang. So anyway, um, for now, yun muna ang sasabihin ko sa legal compensation. We will discuss that um, later on. But what you have to remember here is that pagka quits yung utang, extinguish na yan. So kung nagbayad itong si third person, out na si debtor dyan kasi na-release na siya because of compensation. Um, what else? Um, 12.37, so yun na nga. Um, if payment is made with the consent of the debtor, uh, creditor will be subrogated. Third person will be subrogated into the rights of the creditor. So 12.38 talks about payment by a third person who does not intend to be reimbursed. So here, third person pays the debt of the debtor. So um, this is actually yung uh, paying third person does not intend to be reimbursed. So, the payment will be deemed a donation as to him. And uh, remember here, class, that uh, in case that it is a donation, it will require the uh, debtor's consent to be valid. Now, a creditor who accepts payment from a third person who does not, who does not intend to be reimbursed will extinguish the obligation of the debtor to the creditor. So, kung tinanggap ng creditor yung pera galing sa third person na ayaw magpa-reimburse, as to the creditor, the obligation is already uh, extinguish even if um, yung debtor did not give the consent to the uh, donation or payment of the third person. So, uh, yung uh, debtor, kung gusto talaga niyang magbayad, hindi na niya pwedeng bayaran uli yung creditor kasi nga, bayad na yung creditor eh. As to him, the obligation is uh, extinguished. And um, later on, if the third person nagbago yung isip niya, hindi na niya gusto yung um, na wag siyang bayaran, pwede pa rin siyang maningil uh, later on. And the debtor cannot legally refuse to pay third person instead insist on paying on the creditor, uh, paying to the creditor. But um, I remember here that because payment is made without the uh, consent of the uh, debtor, because remember, requires debtor's consent to be valid. Let us say, class, um, debtor does not consent to the payment made by a third person. Kasi nga, tandaan nyo ha, no one should be compelled to accept the generosity of another person. Hindi mo pwedeng pilitin ang isang tao na, tang na magkaroon ng utang na loob sa'yo. Yan ang, ano yan, yan ang pinakamagandang explanation niyan. So, um, remember class that um, because payment is made against the will of the debtor, only beneficial reimbursement is allowed to this uh, third person. So anyway, um, also... Uh, pre-disposal of the thing and capacity to alienate is required in payment. So, pre-disposal thing to be delivered must be must not be subject to any claim or lien or encumbrance. So, wala siyang burden. And uh, also, remember that capacity to alienate is means that the person is not uh, incapacitated to enter into uh, contracts and to make dispositions of property. So, the general rule if the person paying, if the payer does not have predisposition of the thing or end capacity to alienate, it is, remember, void uh, payment, even if it is accepted by the creditor. So, kung ang nagbayad sa inyo is a minor, uh, yun siya yung payer, remember, the minor can recover the payment. So, anyway, um, creditor naman cannot be compelled to accept the payment from an incapacitated uh, person. So, except here in case of 1427, minor, medyo hindi na applicable kung between 18 and 21 years old kasi ang minor, basta minor 17 and below, wala na tayong ganitong concept. So, minors who enter into a contract without the consent of parents or guardians and voluntary pays, voluntarily pays a sum of money or delivers a fungible thing in fulfillment of the obligation, hindi na niya pwedeng i-recover if the um, creditor spent or consumed it in good faith. Meaning, the creditor does not know na yung nagbabayad sa kanya is a minor. So, the creditor, thinking na yung nagbayad sa kanya is of legal age, uh, ginasos niya, spend it in good faith, consumed it, hindi na mare-recover yung uh, pera. Now, kung may natira, syempre, the, um, the payer who is incapacitated can recover yung uh, money in so far as merong natira. Pero kung walang natira and it was spent in good faith, remember, wala na siyang 
marerecover. Uh, how about the rules regarding uh, payees? Uh, si sino bang babayaran? Yan ang question sa 1240. So, creditor or obligee or the person in whose favor the obligation has been constituted, common sense yan, uh, creditor at the time of pay, that at the time payment is to be made, not at the time of the constitution of the obligation. Because, uh, remember, uh, third persons may be subrogated to the rights of the creditor. So, pwedeng magiba yung creditor natin. Ang importante dito is um, the creditor at the time of payment. Sino bang creditor mo at the time of payment? Siya ang kailangan mong bayaran. Um, what else? Uh, creditor, successor, successors in interest, um, heirs or assignees. What else? Any person uh, authorized to receive a uh, payment. So, remember, um, uh, authorized by the creditor, but also a person authorized by law to receive payment, such as guardian, executor, administrator of the estate of a deceased, or assignee or liquidator of a partnership or corporation. Uh, remember here that the authorization may be by agreement of the parties or by uh, law. So, sila ang babayaran mo. Now, in uh, 1241, Payment to an incapacitated person. So, ang binabayaran mo sa 1241 is an incapacitated person. What is the effect? Payment to an incapacitated person is not valid. So, kung ang babayaran ninyo, if you will deliver a payment to a, an incapacitated person, pwedeng ma-invalidate ma yung uh, payment nyo. Unless such incapacitated person kept the thing paid or delivered, or that the incapacitated person was benefited by the payment. So, may exceptions naman. So, the general rule is that void ang payment mo. Except pagka tinabi ng, eh, kasi minor siya, yan. If the minor kept yung uh, payment, um, or he was benefited by the payment, uh, yung payment is valid in so far as tinabe yung payment or nag-benefit yung uh, minor. So, let us say creditor, debtor pays minor. Minor is obviously incapacitated to receive payment. As a general rule, payment made by debtor to minor is valid void payment. Now, um, what if itong minor, nung binayad sa kanya yung let us say 1 million, tinago niya yung buong 1 million, then payment is valid because the minor kept yung thing paid or delivered. What if yung minor, uh, uh, let us just say, um, tinago niya yung 500,000, tapos yung 500,000, uh, pinambili niya ng um, necessities, uh, ba, uh, goods, uh, pagkaem, yan, yung pinakinabangan niya. So, remember class here, that pay, yung buong 500 na, na ano ah, yung other 500,000 portion, ginamit niya para sa necessities. Pinabayad niya sa school, etc., etc. Remember, class payment is valid also uh, up to that extent. Kasi nga, uh, minor benefited from the payment. So, incapacitated benefited, incapacitated kept the thing. So, um, kung hindi tinago yung bagay, at saka kung hindi nag-benefit yung uh, minor, the debtor may be made to pay again by the creditor's guardian or by the incapacitated person himself when he acquires capacity or recovers from his incapacity. So, ito pang malala dito, class. It is the debtor who must uh, prove that the creditor or the minor or the incapacitated person in fact benefited from the payment. So, anyway, benefit may be financial, moral, or intellectual, but the debtor must prove benefit niyan ang tandaan nyo. What else? Um, what about if a payment is made to a third person? Yan. So, uh, if payment is made to a third person, remember, um, third person or an authorized party is, as a general rule, not valid again. Except when it has redounded to the benefit of the creditor. Kung nakinabang pa rin yung creditor, ang binayaran mo ay third person. Valid ito. Up to the point na nakinabang din si creditor. So, binigay mo yung bayad kay X. Ang creditor mo ay si Y. 
kalau si debtor binayaran mo si X, ang creditor mo ay si C, parang hindi naman tayo malito. Creditor mo ay si C, creditor, binayaran mo si T, third person, para hindi na rin tayo malito. So anyway, um, remember, uh, si T is not your creditor. You should you should not have paid to um, uh, T, because remember, third person siya. So anyway, if you paid uh, to T, tapos itong si creditor na kinabang din dun sa binayad mo si T, ay T, remember class that uh, the payment is valid up to that uh, portion only where the creditor benefited. Kung napunta rin sa kanya yung benefit, um, payment will will be valid at up to that extent. But again, class, benefit is not assumed. It must be uh, proven by the person interested in proving this fact. So, probably it is not better who is interested uh, to prove that the creditor actually benefited from the payment to a third person. So, Kung uh, hindi na prove yung uh, benefit, um, creditor has a right to demand payment again. So, um, payment is valid but only to the extent of benefit, financial, moral, or intellectual to the creditor. Payment must be proved and not presumed in, except in certain cases. So, ito na tayo sa exception. So, um, when benefit to creditor is uh, presumed, in case of payment to an unauthorized uh, person. So, number one, in case of subrogation of the payee into the creditor's uh, right. So, uh, let us say, um, imposter, uh, may lending ka. So, ikaw ay creditor, tapos nagpapahiram ka ng pera, ikaw may ari na uh, lending. Tapos, the debtor, instead of paying directly to the office of the, uh, to your office, uh, lending office, yan. Ang binayaran lang niya is an uh, agent na nagpapanggap na uh, or isang third person who is um, pretending to be authorized to accept payment for, for the lending company. So, anyway, uh, later on, if this uh, impostor na agent or yung nagpukunwaring authorized siya um, becomes the owner of the lending uh, company. Yan. So, itong creditor, binenta niya yung lending niya kay ano, Kay impostor, third person. Remember that uh, there is subrogation of the uh, payee or the third person na nakatanggap ng payment to the creditor's right. So here, class, remember, benefit is um, presumed. Yan. Kasi nga yung um, dating creditor, there is a presumption na nakinabang siya nung nakuha na ng uh, third person yung kanyang uh, credit. Uh, what else? Um, creditor ratifies payment to a third person. So, binigay ni a debtor D yung payment kay uh, T. Tapos, itong si creditor, later on, oh, okay na yung bayad mo kay T. Okay na yun, ayos na yun. So, here, creditor ratifies payment to third person. So, benefit to T to creditor is presumed. What else? Um, if by the creditor's conduct, um, the debtor has been led to, ma to make the payment. So, this is based on the doctrine of uh, estoppel. So, um, in estoppel, remember, an admission or representation is rendered conclusive upon the person making it and cannot be denied or disproved as against the person relying thereon. So, there is here an admission or representation, representation, sabi na lang natin, um, which is uh, rendered conclusive upon the person who makes yung representation. And the person who makes the representation cannot deny it or disprove it against any person who relied on the representation of uh, the person na gumawa nga ng representation na yun. So, uh, example na lang, um, yung, um, uh, yun nga, yung same lending na yan. So, ikaw ay creditor, tapos meron kang lending, tapos yung janitor na hindi naman talaga authorized to receive payment, um, pinagsuot mo siya ng uh, uniform uh, ng mga ahente na naniningil. So, itong um, janitor na to, he's not, who is not actually authorized to receive payment, pinalabas mo na siya ay uh, authorized to receive payment by uh, making him wear yung uniform ng mga ahente or yung mga collector. So, uh, remember here, class, that the creditor can no longer deny uh, or disprove yung um, representation na ginawa niya. Remember, the creditor represented itong janitor as an agent or collector or collector. Yan kung sino English. So, Tagalog collector. So, anyway, um, 
yun ang representation niya. So, nag-rely yun si debtor. So, si debtor, nagbayad siya kay uh, nagpapanggap na ahente na nakasot ng, ng uniform. Pero janitor lang pala talaga. So, remember class, uh, because the representation is made by the creditor, it is rendered conclusive upon him who made yung representation. So, hindi na niya pwedeng i-deny, hindi na niya pwedeng disprove yan. Kasi nag-rely na yung debtor dyan eh. Eh kung hindi mo ginawa ang pinagsuot ng uniform niya at sinabi mo sa kanya ako magbayad, eh di sana hindi ako nagbayad sa kanya. So remember here class that the creditor is already in estoven. So anyway, uh, what else? Um, payment made to a person uh, in possession of credit. So remember refers to a person who is not the creditor but uh, who on the face of the in instrument appears to be the rightful holder uh, thereof. So here, remember, the third person must be in possession of the credit itself and not merely the document or instrument evidencing the uh, credit. The payer must also act in good faith, uh, honest belief that he is, in fact, making a valid uh, payment and that the uh, payee is the owner of the credit. Anyway, good faith is always uh, presumed. So ang example dito usually is nakapulot ka ng promissory note. Ang nakalagay sa promissory note is, uh, I promise to pay to uh, better. So, uh, any, ang ibig sabihin ng I promise to pay to better, uh, you will pay kung sino yung hawak ng promissory note. So, yun, anyway, wala na kayong negotiable instruments. Eh. So, um, sisimplihan ko na lang. Uh, I will not complicate it. Well, wala naman na, hindi naman nakasama sa board exam. So, anyway, uh, promissory note, I promise to pay to better 10,000 pesos. Yan. So, um, any person who uh, is in possession or yung bearer nagahawak ng a promissory note will be paid by the um, debtor. So anyway, may napulot si uh, a third person na uh, promissory note. Uh, usually kasi, di ba class, halimbawa ikaw yung nag-execute ng promissory note, ikaw yung debtor. I promise to pay bearer 10,000 pesos, ibibigay ko yun sa creditor. So the creditor should be in possession of the promissory note. So pagka siningil niya sa'yo, papakita mo yung promissory note. Pagka siningil ka niya, papakita niya yung promissory note na pinagmahan mo. Pagka nabayaran mo na, magandang idea rin na kunin mo na yung promissory note para hindi ka na niya masingil ulit. No? So anyway, yung promissory note which is in possession of the creditor, nawala. So may nakapulot. Let us say T, nakapulot yan ng uh, promissory note. So nung napulot ni T, pinakita niya kay uh, debtor. Si debtor naman, believing na siya na yung bagong uh, bearer ng note, ah, uh, ng promissory note na yan, binayaran niya si uh, T. So, remember here, class, that uh, payment uh, is uh, valid because uh, payer must uh, act, acted in good faith. Akala niya si T na talaga ang in possession of uh, the credit. Not only the instrument, but the credit itself. At akala niya talaga siya na yung bagong creditor and uh, he is making a valid uh, payment. So, remember here, class, that uh, payment in so far as um, debtor is concerned, the obligation is extinguished. Now, yung creditor na hindi naman siya nabayaran, habulin niya yung third person na nakapulot ng uh, promissory note kung yun ang gusto niya. So, the requisite payment is, made, payment is made in good faith and the payee must be in possession of the uh, credit, not only the instrument. There must be, remember, color of title. It is as if the um, holder of the promissory note is entitled to payment. Please take note also class of Article 1243. In this case, payment to the creditor is not valid. Uh, remember here that uh, payment to the creditor is considered invalid because there is an order by the court or other competent authority made to the debtor to retain the debt or to retain payment. Wag mo nang magbayad kahit na sino wag mong babayaran. So remember, payment made by such debtor is invalid and he is considered to be in bad faith. So, the retention here uh, is pursuant to an order of interpleader, injunction, or garnishment. In your book, the example is uh, garnishment. So, ang discuss ko is yung interpleader. So, interpleader is an action in which a certain uh, person in possession of a certain property wants yung uh, claimants to litigate or pag-awayan nila sa sarili nila, magdemandahan sila uh, among themselves uh, who is entitled to the um, property. So here, the debtor is in possession of the property, tapos merong dalawang nakiklaim. So hindi niya malaman kung sino ang creditor niya, kung kanino niya ibibigay. So magpa-file ng interpleader ang uh, debtor, 
and yung um, mga nakiklaim will litigate uh, among themselves kung sino ang entitled dun sa property. So let us say, um, debtor has in his possession uh, some uh, merchandise. Tapos yung merchandise na yan will be delivered to a person who can present the proper receipt. So anyway, um, itong si uh, A and B, nagpunta sila. They both have a receipt. The receipts uh, seem to be legitimate, both of them. And uh, pareho, yung parehong-parehong resibo, as in. So itong si debtor does not know to whom he will uh, deliver. So he must uh, go to court and file an action for an uh, interpleader. So here, uh, A and B will litigate among themselves and they will be able to settle their conflicting rights later on, depending sa decision ng courts. Now, the court will issue an order which will prohibit the debtor from delivering to either A or B. So, ang order ng court dito is, debtor, i-retain mo muna yung merchandise. Huwag mong ibibigay sa kahit na kanino kasi they are still fighting it out kung sino ang talagang may-ari dyan. So, let us say, in the meantime, while there is an order of retention, um, debtor uh, gives you merchandise kay uh, A. Sabi natin na bola siya ni A. So, remember, payment to A or delivery of the merchandise to A here is uh, invalid. So, why? Because the uh, debtor here paid after he was um, judicially ordered to retain uh, the debt. So, later on, kung um, manalo si A talaga, so, okay lang, walang problema. But, um, if, what if, itong si A ay natalo? So, the debtor will be uh, liable for that. So, pwede pa rin siyang singilin noong um, uh, B. Kasi nga, payment made to A is, remember, invalid uh, payment. So, anyway, that is 1243. Yung garnishment, tignan nyo na lang sa book ninyo and also uh, injunction. So, other rules in payment. So, 1246, which we have already discussed, the rule of medium quality, which applies to generic objects. So, debtor and creditor do not agree. I did not agree as to the quality of object deliver medium kasi uh, hindi naman napag-agrihan kung anong quality. So, uh, creditor cannot insist on a superior quality object. Debtor cannot deliver an inferior quality uh, object. So, of course, the benefit of the provision may be waived. Creditor may uh, accept inferior quality. De debtor may deliver superior quality. Expenses for payment, extrajudicial, Remember, the rule is that debtor has to pay for extrajudicial expenses. So, um, of course, this will not apply to expenses incurred by the creditor in going to the debtor's domicile to collect uh, payment. So, uh, exception here, there is a stipulation to the contrary. So, primarily, dahil magbe-benefit nga naman sa extinguishment ng obligation yung debtor, siya ang kailangan magbayad ng extrajudicial uh, expenses. How about if... Uh, the costs are judicial. So, judicial courts, costs will be awarded to the winning party. So, obviously, uh, losing party will uh, pay. So, pwede naman, naman, uh, pwede naman na i-adjudge ng court na either party shall pay the cost of action or uh, it will be divided or to each his own um, uh, cost. So, kanya-kanya kayo ng uh, uh, cost. So, obviously, no costs are allowed the, against the government unless otherwise uh, provided by uh, law. Payment also should be made in uh, legal tender. So legal tender, remember, is the currency which a debtor can legally compel a creditor to accept in payment of a debt in money when tendered by the debtor in the right amount. So right amount and uh, right currency, pwedeng ipilit na debtor na tanggapin ng creditor. So um, payment of debts in money shall be made in the currency stipulated. If not possible to deliver in stipulated currency, eh, the yung currency which is legal tender in the Philippines. Yan. So, what is legal tender in the Philippines is a Philippine peso. Di bastang-bastang peso lang, ha? Philippine peso. So, um, so, remember, class, that uh, all coins and notes issued by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas constitutes a uh, legal tender for all uh, debts. Um, class, please read um, Banco Central ng Pilipinas Memorandum Circular Number 537 Series of 2006, date, uh, ju dated July 18, 2006. So, we will uh, include that in the recitation uh, next uh, meeting. So, payments made by means of instrument of credit. So, 
instrument of credit, uh, remember, from sorry notes, checks, etc. So, bills of exchange, other commercial documents, not legal tender. So, creditor cannot be uh, compelled to accept them. So, kahit na certified check or manager's check pa yan, dahil ang check ay hindi legal tender, creditor can refuse. Now, if the creditor chooses to accept yung mga check eh, or promissory notes, bills of exchange, um, suspended ang uh, payment. So, uh, the creditor must cash yung uh, instrument uh, only when it is um, uh, cashed will there be payment. So, in short, payment is effective, uh, effected only upon yung uh, if the instrument is honored or pagka successfully na i-cash niya yung uh, instrument. So, uh, pagka naman na-dishonor yung check, eh, promissory note, etc., dun pa lang siya pwedeng mag-demanda uh, for a uh, non-payment. So, kung di pa naman na, na, na tumatalbog yung check, eh, di mo, hindi ka pa pwedeng mag-demanda for a uh, non-payment. What else? Um, effects on obligation. Uh, obligation is not extinguished unless the instrument has been cashed or unless they have been impaired through the fault of the creditor. So, yung creditor, yung cheque isang taon na, hindi pa niya pinapasok sa banko, the cheque has already become stale. So, eh, uh, yung instrument has been impaired through the fault of the creditor. So, extinguish na yung uh, obligation. So, kasalanan naman ng creditor, eh. dapat pinakash na kaagad. Uh, what else? Uh, in case of uh, extraordinary inflation or deflation. So, inflation, sharp sudden increase of money or credit or both without corresponding increase in a uh, business transaction. So, ang inflation will cause a drop in the value of money. So, there is a rise in the general price level. Maraming um, uh, pera, pero um, walang halaga. Uh, remember, value of money, nagda-drop yan. In case of deflation naman, reduction in volume and circulation of available money or credit resulting in a decline of the general price level. It is uh, obviously the opposite of inflation. So, in uh, remember, uh, deflation, masyadong konti yung pera na nagsisirculate. So, nagkukulang yung pera. Imagine that, no? So, uh, there is a reduction in volume of money circulating. So, anyway, um, remember class that extraordinary uh, defl inflation or uh, deflation is a decrease or increase in the purchasing power of the Philippine currency which is unusual or beyond common fluctuation kasi laging nagpa-fluctuate naman yan eh so, uh, and uh, remember such increase or decrease could not have been reasonably foreseen or was manifestly beyond the contemplation of the parties at the time of the establishment of the obligation so hindi nila na-anticipate na mangyayari itong um, uh, extraordinary inflation or deflation. So, the basis for payment in case of uh, inflation or deflation is the purchasing value of the currency at the time of the establishment of the obligation shall be the basis of payment. So, kung nagkaroon ng extraordinary increase um, in the um, um, value uh, of money, uh, in the ano, increase in money yan, nagkaroon ng sudden increase ng money dumami yung pera pero walang halaga or in case of inflation remember class, the basis of payment is yung halaga na ang, ng obligation at the time of constitution kung nagkaroon naman ng uh, deflation, so sobrang nawala yung mga money circulating so tumaas yung uh, value ng pera so in case of deflation remember, ang basis again for payment will be the value of the obligation at the time of establishment. So, um, um, uh, here, what you have to remember, yung requisites for application, there is existence of extraordinary inflation or de deflation. Uh, there is an official declaration made by the government na meron ngang extraordinary inflation or deflation. Uh, the obligation is to pay a sum certain in money. The obligation is based on a contract. So, the obligation to pay a sum certain in money is based on a contract and there exists no stipulation to the uh, contrary. So, let us say, for example, class. 
actually the example in your book is uh, on point uh, hindi ko na siya babaguhin so in the book of the leon the debtor borrowed money from the uh, creditor 5000 pesos payable after 5 years so here there is a contract yan and number 2 the obligation is to pay a sum certain in money in a uh, uh, in 5 years. So, um, payable after 5 years pala. So, nakuha na natin yung uh, darawa, dalawang requisite. So, in the contract between debtor and creditor, there is no stipulation na um, yung uh, basis ng payment will be yung uh, value at the time of um, uh, value at the time of payment. So, or in short, hindi nila consider yung uh, extraordinary inflation or deflation. So, anyway, um, Ginakuha natin yung tatlong requisite. So, let us say after five years, nung time of payment, uh, nag-announce ang um, government that there is extraordinary inflation or deflation. So, nakuha na natin yung unang dalawang requisite. Existence of extraordinary inflation or deflation. And number two, there is an official uh, declaration. So, nakuha na natin lahat ng uh, requisite. So, let us say class um, uh, five years. Uh, nung time of payment, yung uh, nagkaroon ng inflation. So, yung halagang 5,000, hindi na talaga siya 5,000 ngayon. Kasi napakaraming nagsisirculate na pera, yung pera wala ng halaga. So, yung 5,000 mo is actually, let us say, 2,500 na lamang because of inflation. Now, remember here, class, that the debtor has to pay 10,000 pesos para ma tapatan yung value na 5,000 pesos because of inflation. Now, in case na nagkaroon naman ng def, uh, deflation, yun ang dineclare ng government. So, yung um, 5,000 niya, hindi na halagang 5,000. Halagang 10,000 na siya. So, para maging katumbas siya nung value nung 5,000 at the time of establishment of the obligation, yun ang basis eh, nung pinag-usapan natin eh. So, uh, ang kailangan lang ibayad ng debtor here is 2,500 because there is extraordinary uh, deflation. So, anyway, uh, rules regarding uh, place of uh, payment. Uh, here is what you have to remember. Uh, if there is a stipulation, sundin yung uh, place of payment designated. So, kung ang napag-usapan nyo is San Vicente, Tarlac City, eh di San Vicente, Tarlac City, that is the place of payment. Regardless kung saan pa kayo natira, nakatira, basta pinag-usapan San Vicente, Tarlac City, dun ang bayaran. What else? Um, if there is no stipulation and the thing to be delivered is specific, payment uh, shall be made uh, at the place where the thing was, at the time of perfection of the contract. So, the contract involves a car. The car is in San Nicolas, uh, Tarlac City. Tapos, um, ang bahay ng debtor ay San Vicente, ang bahay ng creditor ay um, San Miguel. So, the place of payment here, let us say it involves a car which is san, in San Nicolas, Tarlac City. The place of payment is, uh, considering the object is specific, the place of payment is San Nicolas, Tarlac City. So, doon pupunta ang debtor para kunin yung kotse, doon din ba ang bayaran. So, if uh, merely temporarily there, as when the object is being shipped or already in the ocean, payment should be made at the domicile of the debtor. So, at the time of perfection of the contract, in transit pa lang yung kotse, nakasakay sa Roro, etc., etc. So, hintayin nating makarating sa kanyang destination and the place of payment will be the domicile of the debtor. Plus, please take note of the terms venue, domicile, residence. Nasa book niyan. Uh, kayo nang bahala. If there is no stipulation and the thing to be delivered is generic, remember, place of payment shall be domicile of the debtor. So, remember, creditor will bear the expense in going to the debtor's uh, place to accept payment. Nakita nyo naman yung mga bumbay, di ba, class? Pagka naningil sila, saan sila nagpupunta? Sa bahay ninyo. Kasi nag-aral sila ng RFBT1. They are aware that the place of payment, remember, money is generic. So, generic obligation to. And they, they are aware that the place of payment is the domicile of the debtor. That is why they go to your house. Pinag-aralan nila sa akin yan. So, magagaling talaga sila. So, remember here, um, debtor changes domicile in bad faith. Um, the additional expenses shall be borne by the debtor. So, um, Obligation to perform personal, uh, the obligation to perform a personal obligation. <laughs> ano ba yan? So anyway, is made at the domicile of the debtor. So kung halimbawa kakanta ka, um, ang, ang personal obligation is kakanta yung uh, debtor. So anyway, saan kakakanta? Doon ba sa bahay mo? Pupuntahan ka ba ng creditor? O pupuntahan mo yung creditor at doon ka kakanta sa bahay niya? Remember class, pupuntahan ka ng creditor para marinig niya yung kanta mo. Si Mistro sa sayaw, pupunta ka ba sa 
kreditor sa sa iwan mo siya sa bahay niya o pupunta ang kreditor sa iyo papahano o rin kanyang sumayaw so remember the answer is puntahan ka ng kreditor panoorin kanyang sumayaw so that is um, the rule when it comes to place of payment so anyway um, special forms of payment we have uh, actually uh, four um, application or imputation of payment which is covered by article 1252 yung uh, dasyon in payment or dasyon in pago or adjudic adjudication in pago or dasyon in solutum which we have already discussed uh, in the topic identity of prestation under 1245 I will no longer discuss it again uh, session or assignment in favor of creditors in 1255 and also tender of payment and consignation under articles 1256 to 1261 So anyway, for special forms of payment, we will discuss the first one. We will discuss session and we will discuss tender of payment and consignation. Ayoko nang ulitin yung dasyon. Unang-una, ang dami niyang synonyms, nakakainis. So anyway, application of payments um, or imputation of payments, they are the same animal. Designation of the debt um, to which uh, should be applied yung... Um, Payment made by a debtor who has various debts of the same kind in favor of one and the same uh, creditor. So here, class, there is um, one debtor, one creditor, and there must be two or more debts. So, sa madaling sabi, isang debtor, isang creditor, yung debtor maraming utang sa creditor. What else? Debts are of the same kind. What else? Um, debts to which payment, payment, uh, debts to which payment made by the debtor has been applied must be, um, must be due, yan, natakpang ko yung salitang due, hindi ko napapakita sa inyo, tignan nyo na lang sa book ninyo. Um, what else? Payment must, made must not be sufficient to cover all debts. O, tignan nyo ha, isang debtor, isang creditor. Maraming utang si debtor kay creditor. Magkakapareho sila ng nature. Tapos, um, yung mga debts nila is due and demandable. Yung mga maraming utang na yan, due lahat. And, yung bayad ng debtor, ulang pa. Yan, what else? And, um, so remember here, Dahil kulang ang bayad mo, nagbayad ka ng konti, remember class that um, the debtor can choose kung saan i-apply yung kanyang kulang na bayad. So, mamimili ang uh, debtor as a general rule kung saan ibabayad yung kanyang binayad na kakarampot. So, anyway, um, usually class, application of payments is made to debts which are due already but uh, subject to some exceptions if there is a stipulation that the debtor may apply to debts which are not yet due and uh, if it is made by the debtor or creditor and the benefit of per of the period has been given to the debtor na gumagawa ng application or the benefit of the period is given to the creditor na gumagawa ng application of payment uh, in short class um Sa dami ng utang mo, tapos kulang yung mo, piliin mo kung alin ang utang na babayaran mo. Yun ang application of uh, payment. So, the rules in application, very simple. A debtor will choose. He will indicate at the time of making payment and not afterwards which debt is being paid. So, kung meron kang debt 1, 10,000, debt 2, 3,000, debt 3, um, 4,000, debt 5, um, Naku, nakalimutan ko na yung mga figures sa sinabi ko. Debt 1, 1,000. Debt 2, 2,000. Debt 3, 3,000. Debt 4, 4,000. O, ba diba? Para hindi ko nakalimutan. So, anyway, um, debtor should make yung um, application at the time of um, at the time of uh, payment. So, let us say the debtor has 2,000 pesos. So, pwede niyang i-apply dun sa kanyang mga uh, debt. So, Uh, exception nito is if there was a valid prior but contrary agreement, the debtor cannot choose. So, kung meron na sila napag-usapan kung saan i-apply yung payment, hindi pwedeng mamili yung creditor, ay debtor. And, of course, the debtor cannot choose to pay part of the principal ahead of the interest. Remember here, class, the rule on integrity of payment must also be followed in the application of payment as the creditor cannot be made to receive partial payment. So, let us say, Debt 1, 1,000. Debt 2, 2,000. Debt 3, 3,000. Debt 4, 4,000. Debtor pays 2,000 pesos. Obviously, kulang. Kasi makano yung utang niya? 4 plus 3, 7, uh, 8, 9 plus 1, uh, um, 10,000 pesos. So, yun ang utang niya. Tapos, ang binayad niya at 2,000 lang. So, kulang na kulang. So, remember here, class, that um, debtor may choose only debt 1 
and debt too. Why? Because uh, remember, creditor cannot be compelled to make uh, to receive partial payment. So, pwede ni apply ni debtor kay debt one. At least may sobra pa siyang one thousand. So, pwede ni apply sa ibang utang. Sana kung tatanggapin ng creditor yung partial payment. Pero wise choice talaga is debt two, so that debt two will be uh, extinguished completely. Kasi um, uh, may integrity dun eh. Um, so anyway, um, ob obviously, if the creditor uh, chooses, um, the creditor can accept uh, partial payment for uh, debts 3 and debts, uh, debt uh, 4. So yun ang tandaan natin. Uh, what else? Um, the right to make application once exercised is irrevocable unless there is consent given by the creditor. So hindi na pwedeng palitan yung choice. However, hindi, uh, if there is uh, consent, to uh, change sa application of payment, uh, hindi pa rin to papayagan if third persons will be uh, prejudiced. What else? If the debtor does not apply, so the debtor applies. If debtor does not apply, creditor may make uh, the designation by specifying in the receipt which debt is being paid. So remember here that the, ito nga lang, that the designation or application made by the creditor should be made with the knowledge and consent of the debtor. Otherwise, the application is void. So, sa madaling sabi class, it is still the debtor who controls the application because if the debtor does not uh, consent to such application made by the creditor, payment or the application is uh, void. So, yun ang tandaan natin dyan. So, another rule, um, if the creditor has not also made application so hindi dinesignate ng debtor kung anong debt ang binabayaran hindi dinesignate ng creditor kung anong debt ang binabayaran or if the application is not valid the debt which is most onerous to the debtor among those due shall be deemed to have been uh, satisfied so here the law makes the application of payment so debtor applies if the debtor does not apply creditor will apply. If creditor does not apply, application is made in accordance with law or by operation of a law. So, remember, pagka law ang nag-apply, it will choose the most onerous debt. So, let us say, debt 1, 1,000 at 1% 1 interest per month. Debt 2 at um, um, 2% 2 interest per month worth 2,000. Debt 3, uh, worth 3,000 at 3% interest per month and debt for at 3.5% uh, interest, uh, the principal amount is 4,000 pesos. So, uh, let us say, ang binayad ni um, uh, creditor is uh, 4,000, ay debtor pala, ay ang binayad niya is 4,000, but the debtor did not apply payment. Hindi niya sinabi kung alin ang kanyang babayaran. Tapos, um, Hindi rin, niya sina, hindi rin sina, dinesignate ng creditor. The creditor did not also make an application. So, the law comes in. And by operation of law, uh, let us say, class, maga nagbayad, wala pa talagang interest. But remember here that the law will apply the debt, uh, the payment to the most onerous or burdensome debt, which in this case is yung debt number 4 at 3.5% uh, interest. Siya kasi yung pinakamataas na interest rate, so sa kanya i-apply yung payment. And remember, 4,000 naman yung amount, so meron pa rin integrity. So, debtor, uh, law will apply it to debt number 4. So, if uh, the debts uh, due are of the same nature and burden, payment shall be applied to them proportionately. So, depending on the amount of uh, debt. So, uh, remember here, class, that um, hmm, if the debtor makes proper application and the creditor refuses to accept, the creditor will be in mora asipiendi. So, also, take note of 1253, a debtor cannot in insist that his payment be credited to the principal ahead of the interest um, unless there is agreement of the creditor. Kasi, um, kailangan bayaran muna yung interest. Kasi kung uubusin nyo yung principal, ano pang magi interest Dapat unang bayaran ang interest. Kung may balance, doon palang i-credit sa principal. So, if the debtor applies in this manner, creditor can uh, refuse because this is a rule provided for by uh, law. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng waiver as to this. What else? Um, uh, 1254. So, remember in 1254, uh, ito yung uh, application made by uh, operation of law to the most uh, onerous uh, debt. Yan. So, uh, the rules regarding most onerous debt, 
actually there is no hard and fast rule. So, wala talaga siyang fixed rule. So, the determination of which debt is most onerous uh, or more burdensome is dependent on a case-to-case -case, uh, basis. So, anyway, some rules provided by jurisprudence, uh, older debts in case of running accounts, um, mas uh, onerous yung mga older debts kung running accounts yan. Uh, Interest-bearing and non-interest-bearing debt, mas mabigat ang interest-bearing um, even if yung... Um, non-interest-bearing is an older debt. What else? Debt as a sole debtor is more onerous than the debt as a solidary debtor. Kasi, anyway, pagka-solidary debtor, pwede namang singilin yung iba as solidary debtors. Um, what else? Um, debt secured by a pledge or mortgage are more onerous than un unsecured debts or yung walang mga collateral. Mas mabigat yung may collateral kasi yung collateral mo baka makuha. That's why more onerous yung secured debts. What else? Of two interest-bearing debts, the one with the higher rate is more onerous. Common sense yan. An obligation with a penalty clause is more burdensome than one without a penalty clause. Uh, common sense. So anyway, there is no hard and fast rule. I will repeat. It is uh, based on a case-to-case -case, uh, basis. Now, um, in case... Um, uh, the debts are of the same nature and burden, uh, payments should be applied to all of them proportionately. What if class the debts are subject to um, different burdens? So, iba-iba um, ang burden ng uh, debt. So, remember, if the debts are subject to different burdens and it cannot be definitely determined uh, which debt is most onerous to the debtor, payment will again be made to all of them proportionately. So, yung isa, secured debt, uh, yung isa, secured debt, yung isa, may mataas na interest. So, kung iba-iba yung burden nila, tapos hindi mo na malaman kung alin ang most onerous debt, remember, apply to them proportionately. Um, uh, I think this is from the book of uh, Justice Paras. I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's in the book of uh, De Leon. So, anyway, subsection 2 talks about a session or assignment of credit. So, isang provision lang yan. 1255, assignment or abandonment of all of the properties of the debtor for the benefit of his creditors. So, i-assign niya yung lahat ng properties niya sa kanyang maraming creditors. And the creditors will sell the properties and yung proceeds nung sale will uh, be used to satisfy yung kanilang uh, credit. So, there are two kinds of assignment actually. Legal, governed by the law on insolvency. Pero ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is voluntary session or that which is referred to art in Article 1255. Um, in voluntary session, remember, all the creditors must agree. So the requisites of voluntary session is there must be two or more creditors. Maraming creditor, pero isa lang ang uh, debtor. So the debtor here must be partially or completely insolvent. And uh, it will involve all properties of the uh, debtor and all creditors must consent. So, debtor, marami siyang utang sa iba't ibang tao. May mga properties siya. Siya ay completely or partially insolvent. O, ito na yung properties ko. Kayo nang bahala. Benta ninyo. Yun ang uh, session. So, pagkabenta nila, yung proceeds ng sale will be used to pay yung uh, credits. Now, uh, remember the effects of voluntary payment. So, Creditors will not become owners, they will become assignees with authority to sell. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, ibebenta, di ba? And debtor is released up to the amount of the net, net proceeds of the sale unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. So in short, kung kulang yung napagbentahan ng lahat ng properties, debtor is still liable for the balance unless there is an, a stipulation to the contrary. Creditors will collect credits in order of preference agreed upon. Kung meron silang agreement amongst themselves, yung mga creditors, kung sinong unang babayaran. Unang bayaran si creditor 1, pangalos si creditor 2. Tapos kung may natira pa, creditor 3, 4. Kung merong order of preference, sundan ang order of preference. Or if there is no uh, agreement or order of preference in proportion to the credits. Ang mag-apply lang to pagkakulang. Pero kasi kung babayar, na, na cover naman lahat ng debts, wala tayong problema. So, um... Subsection 3 talks about tender of payment and uh, consignation. So, uh, the first thing you have to remember about tender of payment and consignation is that they go hand in hand. Hindi ka pwedeng magkaroon ng uh, tender of payment tapos hindi susunod ang consignation. 
the obligation will not be extinguished. Remember, special forms of payment itong apat na to. So, they extinguish an obligation also. So, um, in tender of payment, nag-tender ka, but you did not uh, go to court uh, and f uh, yung consign or consignate yung um, uh, I'm not sure what term they use kasi um, some books I read, I, I, I read consignate, but in some books consign. So, yun ang medyo hindi ko masasabi sa inyo class. So, anyway, um, file an action for consignation. Yan. So, yun na lang para safe ako. So, go to court and file an action for consignation. So, tender ka, pero kung walang consignation, it will not uh, extinguish an obligation. Now, as a general rule, hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng consignation without tender of payment. So, kaya nga siya tender of payment and consignation. Pagka tender mo, you have to proceed to consignation. So, yun ang tandaan natin dyan. Uh, consignation, before you can do it, there must be prior tender. So, uh, unless tender is excused, we will learn that uh, later on. So, anyway, tender of payment, simply offer on the part of the debtor. Uh, it is an offer made to the creditor to accept yung thing or amount uh, due together with a demand to accept yung uh, payment or amount uh, due. So, the debtor must show that he has yung money or money to be delivered or yung he is in possession of the thing yan, na i-deliver at the time of offer. So, there are, uh, remember, tender of payment must be proved by the debtor unless tender is excused. So, proved by the debtor, is nasa kanya ang burden of proof. Nagbigay ako ng offer, ganito yung offer ko, dineman ko na tanggapin niya unless tender is excused. So, requisites of a valid tender of payment. Number one, it complies with the rules on payment. Meaning, it must be in legal tender. Iba yung tender of payment at saka legal tender, ha? Tandaan nyo, ha? Baka mamaya, pagkakaiba, iba pa, yan ang laging pinagkakalitohan ng mga sudyante ko, eh. So, anyway, it must also include um, whatever interest is due. And also, remember that the obligation must already be due and demandable. So, Made in legal tender includes interest and due and demandable. So, yun ang um, rules in payment. What else? Um, unconditional and for the whole amount. So, if made with conditions but uh, accepted by the creditor without protest, creditor cannot later on prescribe the terms for validity of acceptance which he has already made. So, inaccept na niya, waiver on the... Um, happening uh, of the full waiver on the fulfillment of uh, conditions so uh, what else number three must be actually made so manifestation of a desire or intention to pay is um, enough so kailangan uh, remember class that uh, tender must be actually made oh ito na pera tanggapin mo na so kailangan talagang uh, actually i-tender ang payment so if the creditor refuses uh, yung tender of payment, uh, the debtor will be released from responsibility by the consignation of the thing or some due in a court. So, tender of payment without consignation, as I've already said, will not extinguish the uh, obligation. So, consignation must follow tender of uh, payment. Now, ano naman tong pinagsasabi kong uh, consignation. So, consignation, um, uh, I, I think we should uh, skip to this one mamaya na lang. Uh, so, anyway, consignation is, um, remember, the act of depositing the thing or amount due with the proper court when the creditor does not desire or cannot receive it after complying with the formalities required by a law. So, in-offer muna, di pa tinanggap ng creditor. Imagine mo, creditor na, nag, na binabayaran na ayaw pang tanggapin. Saan ka nakakita ng ganyan? Samantalang dito sa Pilipinas, pahirap pang magbayad. My God, ikaw na nga ang nagpautang. Yung debtor na nga ang nangutang. Sila pa yung galit pagka naniningil ka. Ikaw pang creditor, hiyang-hiya kang maningil. Di ba? Nakakahiya naman sa kanila, no? So anyway, um, to extinguish the obligation after tender, there must be a deposit of the thing or money in court. So... If the creditor does not uh, desire to receive or cannot receive you a uh, thing or money, uh, punta ka sa court. 
para hindi ka na magka-problema. Para nga naman matapos na yung interest, hindi ka na liable for a 40 to 7 in case it happens kasi hindi ka na mag, uh, mula ng default on your part, etc., etc. So, yun ang magandang remedy. So, always judicial ang consignation and it generally requires prior tender of payment. By nature, yung tender of payment is extrajudicial. So, wala ka pa naman kasing demanda dyan eh. Kaya, tender, extrajudicial. But this is required. Yung tender is required before you can file an action for a consignation. So, consignation to amount to a valid payment must also comply with the provisions of a payment. So, payment, again, should be made in legal uh, tender. So, anyway, uh, Requisites of consignation, there is a valid debt which is uh, due. Um, what else? Number two, uh, there is valid prior tender of payment um, by the debtor and refusal of uh, without justifiable cause by the creditor to accept it unless tender is excused. Sa madaling sabi, in-offer mong bayaran yung creditor tapos walang kadahilan na valid creditor does not want to accept your payment. Uh, unless tender is excused. So, kahit wala ng tender, pwedeng dumiretso ka sa consignation. Uh, I will discuss that later on after this one. Previous notice of consignation to parties interested in the fulfillment of the uh, uh, obligation. So, sabihin mo na sa kanila, oh, ayaw nyo tanggapin talaga. Pumunta na ako sa court. I will um, file an action for uh, consignation. Yeah, final na to, etc. Tapos, actual consignation of the thing or sum due. And number five, subsequent notice of consignation. Oh, na-file ko na talaga yan. Bahala na kayo. So, usually, the subsequent notice of consignation is made by uh, yung, uh, the court na. The court will send uh, summons, ganyan, letters, yan, para hindi kayo mahirapan, to the uh, creditor. So, anyway, um, uh, we will go back to yung uh, instances when uh, valid prior tender is not uh, required. Not, ay, ako makisama. Yan, nakisama na siya. So, anyway, tender of payment is not required in the following instances enumerated in 1256. When the creditor is absent or unknown, does not appear at the place of payment. So, uh, it, does, it is not required that the creditor is judicially declared absent. But basta hindi mo mahanap yung creditor or hindi mo siya kilala. Uh, because remember, pwede kasing ma-assign ang credit. So baka mamaya iba na yung creditor mo, hindi mo siya kilala, etc. And there is place of payment pero hindi nag, nagpunta yung creditor. Uh, of, kanino ka mag-offer ng payment? That's why here, tender is excused. But else, creditor is incapacitated to receive payment at the time it is due. Remember, general rule, payment to an incapacitated person is a void. Bakit ka magre-risk? So, kahit mag-tender ka dyan, di naman niya naiintindihan eh. Incapacitated nga siya eh. So, diretso ka na sa court. Consignation na. What else? Without just cause, creditor refuses to give receipt. Ito. Important ito. Pagka nagbayad kayo, dapat lagi kayo may resibo. Ngayon kayong isyuan ng resibo, huwag niyong bayaran yung creditor. Diretso kayo sa court kung kayo magbayad. Uh, what else? Um, two or more persons claim the same right to collect. So, mas maganda, i-deposit mo na lang sa court yung pera mo. Tapos, mag-file ka ng interpleader para sila na lang ang mag-litigate among themselves. So, uh, here, di ba, may judicial order ka na to retain the debt. So, para hindi mo na hawak, retain payment. Para hindi mo na hawak yung pera, magastos mo pa, deposit it in court. So, hanggang sa matapos yung interpleader, tapos ang court na ang magre-release to whomever uh, is uh, uh, entitled to the payment. What else? Um, title or written document of obligation has been lost. So, uh, remember, may promissory note ka. Kung ikaw yung debtor, mag-issue ka ng promissory note sa creditor mo, di ba? So, ang creditor mo, pagkabayad mo, dapat ibalik niya yung promissory note na in-issue mo kasi baka mamaya singiling ka niya uli, ano? Now, if the creditor cannot re uh, return yung written document of the obligation, like your promissory note, you can uh, refuse to um, pay the creditor directly and instead uh, go to court and deposit the money in court. Con, uh, consignation in court. Uh, nakakatakot yan, lalong-lalo na kung wala kang tiwala sa creditor mo. Uh, what else? Debtor has been previously notified by the creditor that uh, the latter, the creditor, would not accept any payment. So, uh, hindi tatanggapin naman ng creditor ang payment on the date uh, when it is due. So, bakit ka pa mag-offer sa kanya? Eh, wala namang kwentang mag-offer sa kanya. Hindi naman pala niya talaga tatanggapin. So, anyway, 
instances when tender of payment uh, is not uh, required. So going back, uh, remember class, consignation must be made with uh, proper judicial authority. So deposit to uh, court, yan. So yun ang uh, ibig sabihin yan. So tender of payment must precede consignation. Tender must be proved by the debtor in case when it is necessary. Uh, if tender is not required, kailangan lamang ng prior notice to interested persons of uh, consignation. And that is uh, uh, necessary to be proven. So, creditor will bear the expenses for consignation. Um, dahil nga naman uh, fault or unjust refusal of the creditor to accept payment, siya ang magbayad, ay, siya ang mag, uh, bayad ng expenses. Binibigay na nga yung bayad, ayaw pa. Arte kasi. So, siya magbayad ng expenses for consignation. This is also the reason class why we have yung uh, previous notice of consignation. Kasi baka magbago pa yung isip ng uh, creditor. Eh. Tanggapin na niya yung pera. Because remember, in consignation, once it is deposited in court, the creditor will bear the expenses. So, baka magbago yung isip niya. Inotify mo muna siya bago ka pumunta sa court uh, at mag-deposit uh, mag ng pera doon. So, if consignation is not properly made or debtor withdraws the payment, obviously, the debtor will uh, bear yung expenses. Um, consignation is proper when the creditor accepts the thing or sum deposited without objection as payment of the obligation. So, uh, inotify na ng court ang creditor na, oh, may nakadeposit dito, pera. Kunin mo na. O, oh, ito naman si creditor. Kinuha niya yung pera accepts thing or some deposited without objection, uh, or, uh, uh, this is considered proper uh, consignation. Uh, what else? When the creditor questions the validity of consignation, but the court, after hearing, declares that it is properly made. So, oh, creditor, meron kang pera dito, dineposit ni debtor. Ay, mali yan, hindi ako na-notify, etc., etc. Dami niyang sinabi, walang tender, ganyan. So, nagkaroon ng... Um, uh, question ng validity of tender, nagkaroon ng question ng validity of consignation, court will decide. After hearing, the court declares that there is proper consignation and eh the proper ang consignation. What else? Um, creditor neither accepts nor questions the validity of the consignation. Ano, no comment ng si creditor. But after hearing, the court orders cancellation of the obligation. So, valid uh, consignation again. So, uh, effects of consignation, debtor may ask the judge to cancel the obligation after uh, hearing and there is a judgment that there is proper consign consignation. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Debtor also, in 1260, may withdraw the thing or some consigned. O, tinan mo, consigned na naman ang ginagamit dito, no? So, magulo. So, consigned na lang. I will, sige, total na, sabok nyo naman. As a matter of right before the creditor has accepted consignation, uh, or before there is a judicial declaration that consignation has been properly uh, made. So, um, bago tanggapin ng creditor yung money deposited, or before the court declares that the consignation is proper, the debtor may withdraw yung uh, money. Right niya yun eh. Kasi hindi pa naman ina binibigay sa creditor yan. So, hindi pa rin naman tinatanggap ng creditor yan, at wala pa rin namang judgment ang court. But remember, obviously, if the debtor withdraws the money, the expenses for consignation will be paid by the uh, debtor. Kasi we withdraw naman niya yung kanyang uh, payment deposited to court. So, walang valid extinguishment of obligation. So, also, in 1261, remember class, uh, if after consign consignation having been made, the creditor should authorize the debtor to withdraw the same. The creditor shall lose every preference which he may have over the thing or the uh, uh, debt. So remember, debtors, guarantors, and also sureties will be released from the uh, obligation. So anyway, pwedeng i-withdraw ang pera even after prop, uh, there is a decree uh, that uh, consignation is proper. But there must be authority from the creditor. Now, if the creditor authorizes yung withdrawal of uh, payment, Siyempre, pwede nang i-withdraw ng debtor yan. But the creditor will lose all his uh, preferences over the uh, thing or the uh, money deposited in court. So, also, yung uh, mga 
debtors, guarantors, and uh, sureties will be released from the obligation. So anyway, uh, that is it for uh, payment. So we also covered yung uh, four special forms of payment. It is a very long chapter, I am aware. Very long section pala. Meron pa siyang subsection, so hindi pa na contento. I am aware, but uh, I hope you finish yung uh, entire um, lecture. Uh, if you breach this point, uh, congratulations class. Uh, sigurado na akong papasaka. So anyway, uh, thank you class and uh, good afternoon.